The University of North Texas is a team that, over the past nine seasons, just has not been able to put everything together. They had a formula. A high volume pass offense that complements a run game well and puts 30 plus points on the board regularly. Their defense might struggle to keep up, but as long as they're scoring, they're winning. Or at least that was the hope ever since Seth Luttrell came in as head coach in 2016. Since then, the Mean Green have gone an even 44 and 44 and are 0 and 6 in bowl games. But this could be the start of a new era in Denton. Starting this year, the team will have a new head coach, completely new personnel, and a new conference to call home in the American Athletic Conference. Everything's changing, and personally, I've got a feeling that this Mean Green team just might run the tables and start off this new era with a monstrous bang. My name is Kevin, and in this video, I'll be looking at North Texas and all of their dimensions, from the coaching staff to players, and then seeing how they might stack up in 2023. And now, let's get right into it. The name of the game this year for North Texas is Revamp, and this is indicated in no better area than in the coaching staff. With Seth Luttrell not living up to Texas size standards, the new coach of the Mean Green for this year is Eric Morris. This will be Morris's second head coaching gig, and with him he brings an offense that is sure to wow and a history and connection to Texas football that at this point is necessary for any college football coach. In no way is he as well connected as Joey McGuire or Jeff Trailer. I mean the guy's only 37. But he has coached at at least three different D1 colleges and was on the staffs of such offensive savants as Mike Leach and Cliff Kingsbury. Don't be fooled by the young age of Morris and his staff. They look to come in and immediately establish a new era of football in Denton. One similar in offensive power to before, but with a little extra jolt of energy added to it. Also, just to tag on to the whole new beginnings thing, if you look at the North Texas coaching staffs from 2022 and 2023, I think there's only like one or two guys left from the previous year. And I mean, if that ain't revamp, overall change, whatever you want to call it, I don't know what is. And now to talk about the roster and what position better to start with than, of course, the quarterback. Last year, North Texas was obviously headlined by Austin Awney, the 29-year-old, gunslinging, pocket-passing, really tall-ass quarterback. But now with him gone into the NFL, they've got to move on. And in what better way can they move on than with who they have now, Chandler Rogers? Rogers comes in as a previous two-year starting transfer from UL Monroe, and at UL Monroe, he didn't have the best offense to run under Terry Bowden. But when he got the chances, he showed flashes of pure excellence. He's not as turnover savvy as you'd think an 8-16 quarterback with mobility as his strong suit would be, and on that, his mobility is a huge step up from Austin Ani and his old man legs. And I'm telling you. If there's anyone who can lead an Eric Morris offense like he ran back in Texas Tech with Patrick Mahomes, it is Chandler Rogers. Now unlike their quarterback situation, their running back room is all coming back from last year and they're all pretty dangerous. Last year's leading carrier Ikaika Ragsdale looks to hold onto that title. Big play threat Aoa Day is, well, always a threat. And I've also got to mention Isaiah Johnson, their big back that can get them in the end zone when they need it. Yeah, the Mean Green are keeping a ton of running backs from last year, but the same cannot be said for the receiving core. Three of their top four receivers are gone, including 11 touchdown man Jair Shorter and basically their entire tight end depth chart. But on the bright side, the talent they do keep is massive. Roderick Burns has held down the slot position for the past couple of years, and after leading the team in receptions and yards the past two seasons, he looks to be the senior leading the offense on and off the field. Damon Ward and Jamori Macklin also return, and transfers Trey Cleveland and Blair Conright from Texas Tech and TCU respectively should get in the mix as well. And to cap it off on a bright note, the O-line has always been a bright spot for UNT especially when it comes to protecting the quarterback, so nothing should change there. Moving on to the defense, and this is where a lot of the concerns lie. Only a mere third of the starters from last year are returning. And a lot of the holes they'll need to fill were left by guys that were able to transfer to SEC and other Power 5 programs. You cannot replace a Larry Nixon or a Cam Robertson, but these guys are going to have to try. 
Mason Richards and Roderick Brown will be the top dogs on defense, especially Richards, who comes into his senior year after leading the team with 7.5 sacks and 12.5 tackles for losses. The linebacking core is the shakiest part of the team by far, as none of the starters are returning. Kevin Wood and Jordan Brown will have to be the guys that step up and handle the brunt of the tackling 24-7, because as we went over, that offense is not going to stop. And in opposition, the secondary is where the team will definitely shine. Defensive coordinator Matt Capani has been coaching Division I defensive backs for the past 17 years, and he spent the past four coaching at Iowa State, a team that was sixth in yards allowed per game last year in 287. Rich Texada will be among the best corners in the AAC, as he was a ball hawk that broke up 15 passes and caught three interceptions last year. And safety Logan Wilson is primed to have another dominant year as he did last year. Now with all that, the way I see things, this team has definite potential and talent. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to winning games on their schedule. And unluckily for Morris and his squad, they got some bad draws. They start out with a game against... Wait, what? Cal? Am I re... Is this right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're playing Cal Berkeley... Wait, they're playing in Denton, I guess. Okay, but for real. The game is definitely winnable, as Cal's been struggling mightily over the past three seasons. But they have a bunch of great players returning on both sides of the ball as well as a lot of transfers that will bring facets of their game to Cal that they didn't have before, namely Sam Jackson V at quarterback and his running ability. Also just a cool thing about him, he went to TCU, so a little homecoming to Texas there. The rest of their first half sees them going against all teams that they are favored against, but I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if Navy, Louisiana Tech, or even Temple takes a game or two off them. And then the second half of their schedule comes straight out of a gauntlet. At Tulane, and then home against Memphis and UTSA, is a three game stretch I wouldn't give my greatest enemy. That's three dynamic and dominant teams, two conference champions, and again, just, just one hell of a three game stretch. If they get a game out of that, then hallelujah. But then after that, they go back to back road games against SMU and Tulsa, and then they finish against UAB. Yeah, and if you look at the schedule more closely for them, unfortunately a lot of the quote-unquote easier wins are on the road. And their home slate is the definition of tough for a first-year in-conference team. The way I see it, they'll have some kinks to work out on both sides of the ball at the beginning of the year, no doubt about it. But then with that, they'll have to win at least four of those first six games. That's imperative, if they want any hope of making a bowl game. And then after that, they're only favored in two of their last six games. And those are to a Tulsa team that puts up points every year, and UAB, who under new head coach Trent Dilfer could be the dark horse no one sees coming out of the AAC. So ceiling and floor talk, let's get right into it. The way I see it ceiling wise, the team could realistically win eight or even nine games. But because of all the new pieces they'll have to set in, I'll set it at eight. They're favored in seven games right now, and I could see them taking a game off Cal or Memphis if everything goes right. And then the floor could truly be disastrous, and I'm talking like four wins. But then again, as y'all know with floors, that means that nothing goes right and injuries hampered me green. But you know, everything that can go wrong will probably not go wrong. And for all intents and purposes, even in my point of view, UNT has done everything they can to start their new era off in the best way they can. They got a new head coach with a winning track record both on and off the field, a rare young quarterback with experience, and talent at a lot of the positions that can make them truly potentially dangerous. So all in all, I'll say that they'll go for 6 or 7 wins. And that's great for the first year of a head coach and a bunch of former backups and transfers. Now, I'm not saying hop on the mean green bandwagon right now, it's, it's way too early. But I am saying to keep an eye on them, run with the train, and keep tabs on them whenever you can. Because in a year or two, you never know. The train might have already left the station. Thank y'all for watching.